Greetings, fellow Whovians. Well, let's start our look at the Patrick Trotton era with the power of the Daleks. Mm -hmm. Ben and Polly have just watched the first Doctor collapse to the floor of a TARDIS and have witnessed his change of appearance into a younger man. Polly knows that the man is the Doctor, but Ben believes he is, impo he is an imposter because the Doctor neglects, neglects to confirm nor deny his identity. The TARDIS brings that renewed Doctor, Ben and Polly, to the planet Vulcan, where, on arrival, the Doctor witnesses the murder of the Examiner, a man sent from Earth to check on the human colony located on the planet. After checking the body, the Doctor discovers a badge. A security team, led by Breakin, escorts the Doctor, Ben and Polly, pretending to be, as, as the security team assumes, the Examiner and his party, back to the colony. The Examiner is owned by Quinn, the Deputy Governor, to investigate a group of rebels. The governor regards the problem with the rebels as insignificant. Meanwhile, Lesterson, the colony scientist, has discovered a crashed space capsule. The doctor goes to investigate the capsule, and after having quick look inside, he says that it is enough for one night and goes off to bed. Later that night, Ben and Polly see the doctor heading toward Lesterson's laboratory and go inside the capsule. They follow, and he opens an inner compartment to find two Daleks inside. He deduces that the third Dalek is missing from the capsule. Polly, who had joined the Doctor in the capsule, along with Ben, spots a small mutant crawling across the floor, which disappears into a small opening. Polly screams. Eh. The Doctor, Ben, and Polly leave the capsule to find Lesterson, who immediately starts questioning them on why they are in his lab. The Doctor says that his badge, the Examiner's badge, says that he can go anywhere in the colony. The Doctor questions Lesterton on where he has put the third Dalek. He is afraid that Lesterson might be trying to reactivate it. Once the Doctor, Ben and Polly have left, Lesterson opens a secret apartment where he's hidden the third Dalek. He gets his helpers, Renzo and Jelly, to help the tree activate the Dalek. He is successful, but in the process, the Dalek shoots Renzo dead. Jelly assures Lesterson that Renzo will be fine, although she knows he is dead. At that point, Lesterson removes the gunstick from the Dalek. Meanwhile, Quinn has been accused of sabotaging the communication console and summoning the examiner. Quinn is put on trial and the governor brings, gives Quinn's old job to break in. The doctor, Ben, and Polly attend Quinn's trial, during which Lesterson arrives with a reactivated Dalek, which claims to be the colony's servant. It is subjected to intelligence tests, the result of which astound the colonists. When the Dalek creates a computer which can detect memories, it is accepted without further hesitation. The doctor remains extremely suspicious, however. When he approaches it, that Dalek recognizes him as the doctor, which convinces Ben regarding who he really is. Lesterson then reactivates the reactivate the other two Daleks and removes their guns. They also claim to be the colony's servants. The doctor notices that there are more than three Daleks in the colony and warns that they are breeding. What? This is met with incredulity. Incredu Incredulity, as the colonists believe that the Daleks are machines. The Doctor, Ben, and Polly are imprisoned. The Doctor is seen rolling pieces of fruit along the floor, and Polly says that this is the sort of behavior that makes him wonder if he if he really is the Doctor. It turns out the Doctor is checking if the fruit contains a bugging device. They manage to escape when the Doctor generates the correct tone to open the prison cell by making a partially filled wine glass chime. Hmm. One night, Lesterson goes inside the Dalek capsule and discovers that the Daleks are being manufactured there. He sees an inert mutant being placed on a stand and then suddenly come to life. Lesterson lifted off the stand by a Dalek and placed into a Dalek base, excuse me, with the top fitted into the base. A long Dalek production line creates hundreds of Daleks. They attack the humans and a great battle ensues. That Daleks exterminate half the colonists but several dozens of Daleks are destroyed by laser guns. The Doctor, Ben, and Polly escape imprisonment and help the humans fight what appears to be a losing battle. Governor Hensel is killed by Bregan. The Doctor finally destroys the Daleks by turning their own power source against them. Bregan is revealed to have sabotaged the communication console and killed the real examiner. Quinn has the charges against the Doctor dropped, and Bregan is shot by Valmar after attempting to kill Quinn, who is made governor. The Doctor, Ben, and Polly return to the TARDIS and an inert Dalek stands next to the TARDIS. Ben kicks and exclaims that they will not be having any trouble with the Daleks from now on. As the TARDIS dematerializes, however, the eyesight of the nearby Dalek races upwards. Oof. Yeah, so, lots of stuff going on with the second Doctor's first story, huh? Anyway, let's look at the production elements and, and stuff of this episode. 
The process of regeneration goes unnamed in the serial. Instead, the newly regenerated doctor calls it a renewal. This change of actors was retrospectively labeled regeneration following the use of the term by the production team of the final John Pertwee story, Planet of the Spiders. The doctor finds a dagger in the TARDIS that he claims to have picked up during the events of the Crusade. In episode 2, the doctor refers to Marco Polo as a friend, having met him in the eponymous First Doctor story. In episode 1, the doctor looks into a mirror and sees the First Doctor. David Whitaker first as Vulcan as a planet of the solar system in the 1964 spin-off publication, The Dalek Book. That Dalek pod seen here, like that Dalek time travel capsule previously seen, seen previously in the chase, is, like the TARDIS, bigger on the inside than the outside. In the spin-off media, it is later revealed to have been sent to this location by the 8th Doctor after ejecting from a Thal ship in the spin-off novel War of the Daleks. Working titles for the story included The Destiny of the Doctor and Servants of Masters. Annette Wills was on holiday and therefore absent from C- from e- therefore absent from episode 4. Similarly, Michael Craze was absent for episode 5. The Doctor's regeneration was meant to be a horrifying metaphysical change. The producers compared it to the hallucinogenic drug LSD, which had the side effect of hell and dank horror. Episode 6 was filmed using the 625 line system for the official switchover, although it was recorded onto 35mm film instead of videotape. Bernard Archer returned in Pyramids at Mars. Peter Bathurst returned in The Claws of Axos. Robert James returned in The Mask of Andragora. Andrew Kelsey had previously appeared in The Romans and will return in The Creature from the Pit. The master tapes of all six episodes were erased in the late 1960s, while the BBC Enterprise copies on 60mm for foreign sales were destroyed in 1974. The additional 35mm film negative of, ep- of episode 6 was junk sometime prior to 1970. Some clips survived from various other programs, mainly focusing upon the Daleks. In addition, some footage filmed off-air by an Australian fan onto 8mm Cinefilm exists, showing brief moments of the new Doctor's first moves in the TARDIS. The Australian copies of Power were returned and junked in, 19, in June 1975. Only other two countries purchased the story due to the restriction on Dalek sales by the nation state in 1968. These were New Zealand, which sent its copy to Singapore in 1972. Singapore say they do not possess any copies, and what happened to the set is currently unknown. In August 2016, a two-minute teaser of an animated reconstruction of the serial was leaked onto Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. It was taken down by the BBC within 48 hours, leading to speculation that the animation was indeed official. A week later, the Daily Mirror ran an article stating that a full animation of the serial had been commissioned with no official response from the BBC as of August 31st. Hmm. So, a pretty good start to the second Doctor's era. I give The Power of the Daleks. Five sunk screwdrivers out of five. Well, join me next time as we meet the Highlanders. So, until then, this is Hoovy and Queen saying, Oh my giddy aunt, when I say run, run, I've a responsibility of the neutron flow. Would you like a jelly baby? Fantastic. Allons-y. Geronimo. Bow ties are cool. Fezzes are cool. And Stetsons are cool. <laughs>